Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for the learning of Torah Hashem, Ezra Hashem is back, as we broadcast over here from our flagship station at the Agudah Beiseva, Fairways Lakewood. And as always, we open up with Hakar uh, Satayv to TorahAnytime.com for granting us their global platform for the teaching of Torah. And uh, also, we thank uh, Kalat Lashin for their global network all over the world. And uh, we give uh, also thanks to the Torah Communications Network for carrying our shiurim and uh, to Facebook and YouTube and to our Zoomers and our subscribers and anywhere else where you are hearing these or viewing these shiurim. Tonight, we mark two very special yard sites. We have two very, very dear uh, dedications by two Talmidim. The shir is dedicated by Aaron Swade uh, in a loving uh, dedication of his uh, wife of his youth who 57 years ago to this day uh, passed away in a tragic accident and on her yard site uh, we remember her Chana Bas Shmuel. Her Neshama should have a lichtige ganeden. She should be a Malitzi Yeshara for Aaron, his family, and all of Kla Yisrael. We uh, also are dedicated by Nachman Chapler and family for the yard site of his mother, Sarah Bas Reb Yisrael. Her neshama should have a lichtige ganeden. She should be a melitzi yeshara. Nachman, you should have a refu shalema, parnasa berevach, and uh, everything else for all of us. As we get closer to the Yom Naraim, these shiurim are more and more special. If you want to dedicate a shir, as of now, there is no sponsor for next week. 718. 916-3100 R-M-M-W-S-I Rabbi Moshe Bear Weiss at Nile at AOL.com V'hoya ki sabo yelo aretz asher Hashem alikecha noisin lach When we arrive in the land which Hashem is going to give to you says Moshe Rabbeinu now this is going to be a new experience for you because you're used to getting money and now you're going to have a farm. You're going to have an orchard. Until now, you only got exactly what you needed. Right? You got the mun from Shemayim. And you were told there was no purpose to give tzedakah. There was nothing to do. You got an Omer Legilgoilus, and you ate it all. Now, one of the new rules is, Vulakachta Mereshis Priya Adama. You're going to take from the first fruits of the land, the Samta Batena, you're going to declare it Bikurim. You're going to wrap it with a gemi, with a reed, already when it's on the tree, to remember that this was the first to ripen. And then you're going to place it in a basket. And you'll bring it to the place where Hashem will decide to rest His name there. You'll bring it to the Mizbeach and put it before the Mizbeach for the Kahana. So on this mitzvah Bikurim, there is a fundamental Sifrei. Sifrei, which is the Medrash, on Bamidbar and Devarim, that's why it's called Sifrei. In our day, we mistakenly said Sifri. The whole world says Sifri, but it's a mistake. Hartzkel taught us it's Sifrei in the plural because it's the Medrash on Bamidbar and Devarim. So the Sifrei says a very, very fundamental thing. Asay mitzvazu, do this command. 
Shebeschusa tikana islaaretz, because in its merit you will enter the land. Now that's perplexing. How could it be that we should do this mitzvah who in its merit we will enter the land when, when we don't have the mitzvah to do it until we enter the land? It's, it's confusing. The Sifrei says, do this merit in whose, do this mitzvah in whose merit you will deserve to enter the land. But what does that mean? We don't do the mitzvah until after we enter the land. That's what it says, that it's only a, a commandment. The answer is that you're deserving to enter t- the land if you practice the spirit of this mitzvah. The spirit of this mitzvah is hakaras hatayk. The idea of giving the first of your fruit as a gift to the Kehanim and bringing it to the Beis Migdish is showing that you show gratitude for the gift that Hashem gives you. And it's in the merit that Klal Yisrael will practice Hakar Satay will be people of gratitude that they deserve to get Eretz Yisrael. Remarkable thing. You know, we, we have now, everybody wants Israel. Why do we get it? The answer is because we're people that practice gratitude. That's what the Sifrei says. And that's why we're called Yehudim. What does it mean, Yehudim? Yehudim are people that do Haida. Yehudim are people that give thanks. The first name, Yehuda, was given when Leah had her fourth child. So when Leah had her fourth child, she knew that there were four wives and twelve shvatim, so everybody was supposed to have at least three. That way, it would be equal. When she had her fourth child, she said, oh, I got extra. So, apam ode es Hashem. I got extra, I'm going to give special thanks. Yehudim are people that give thanks. You, you, you know how important it is to be people that say thank you? To be appreciative? It's a remarkable thing I'm going to tell you now. If you look at the Yom Tov Shavuos in the Torah, it's not called in the Torah Chag Matan Torah. Nowhere is Shavuos. We know that's when Hashem gave us the Torah by Harsina. And in our davening we say Matan Torah. But that's, nowhere does the Torah call Shavuos Mat and Torah. What does it call it? It calls it Chag HaBikurim. The festival of the first fruit. And the Mephoshim say that that's to show that even more important than the Torah is the attitude of being grateful. Now that's how Hashem introduced us, Himself to us. Anoichi Hashem alikecha, I am Hashem your God. Asher hoitzei sicha me'eretz Mitzrayim me'beis avadim. I took you out of Egypt from the house of bondage. So Rav Nishom introduced us with this idea that you should be committed to me because of what I did to you. I took you out of slavery from the house of bondage. Now, it's two things. House of bondage is physical. But I also took you out spiritually from the depraved, promiscuous morass of Egypt. So I saved you spiritually and physically. And that's why you should accept me as your God. That's the idea of gratitude. We know... 
I've told you this before, that in the Ten Commandments, there is only one of many relationship responsibilities that we have. We have a relationship to a spouse. We have relationship to parents. We have relationships to children. We have relationships to friends. The only relationship talked about in the Ten Commandments is a relationship to a parent. You know why? Because that's the only relationship that everybody is going to have. Not everybody is going to get married. Not everybody is going to have children. Unfortunately, not everybody will have friends. But if you're on this planet, you had a parent. Everybody has a parent. Now you'll say, but what about an orphan? We have a mitzvah of kibbutz of aim, even if the parent is not alive. Mechabdoi b'chayov, or mechabdoi b'moyse. You have to honor in lifetime and honor in death. That's one of the things we do by Yizker. We have a chiv to honor our parents even. So the t- fifth commandment is kabed of v'esimecha. And in a very, very rare show of reward, because the Torah really doesn't speak about reward, First of all, because we're supposed to serve Hashem without thought of recompense. And secondly, because schar mitzvah bahai al maleka, reward for mitzvahs is not in this world because there's no bank big enough to cash the check of one mitzvah. But when it comes to parents, it says, highlighting how important this is. So the Chinuch, the master of the mitzvahs, the Chinuch says that Kibbut of Aim is a bedrock, bedrock of gratitude. That's what Kibbut of Aim is. Because our parents brought us in this world. We would have nothing, nothing without our parents. And that's why it's so important to practice it. And Hashem says, people that practice that, I want them to be on this world. That's the idea of the man Yerich People of gratitude, I want them to be on this world. Now, the Pasuk, just let's continue this theme. The Pasuk says, V'lakachta me'reshis kol priyo adam. You should take the first to ripen from the fruit of the land. There is in the beginning of the Torah, we know the Torah starts off with the word Bereshus. It's not that far away from Simchus Torah. Bereshus Bora Elikim. There is a very, very fundamental medrash all the way in the beginning of Bereshus Rab. Bereshus Bara Elikim. It's telling us why the world was created. Bereshus Bara. So we know that Rashi tells us Bereshus Bara, why was the world created? Bishvil Yisrael Shenikrareshus and Bishvil Torah Shenikrareshus. The purpose of the creation of the world was for Klal Yisrael and for Torah. That's the purpose of the creation. But the Medrash says something else. Bereshus bara, bishvil bikurim shenikra reishus, reishus kol priyo adama, bishvil truma, the 50th, that we give to the kayin, shenikra reishus, reishus de gancha, bishvil chala shenikra reishus, the chala that your wife takes off, from the dough, Bishvil Chala Shenikra Reishis Shenem Reishis Arisoy Seichem, the first of your dough. So what's going on over here? We're learning again how important gratitude is. You make a dough, you're gonna have 
delicious challah for Shabbos, delicious challah for Yom Tov. You separate part of it to give it to the Kayin, to show gratitude. You have a field and you produce crops in the field, raisins from your wheat, the first, the truma, goes to the Kayin. And the Bikurim is racist, like we learned first. But we're learning over here that it's because of this that the world was created. The trait of gratitude is the purpose of the creation of the world. That's why this is so significant. Every school child knows this. But what's the first words that a Jew is supposed to say when he opens his eyes in the morning? Moida ani lefanecha, melechai v'kayam. Shehechazarta be nishmasi. You return me my soul, bechemla, with compassion. Rabbi Munasecha, so great. Can I rely on you that I never was even worried about it? Now listen carefully. A guy gets up, turns on the radio to see what the Dow Jones did. Or did the Mets win? Did the Yankees win? A Yid, the first thing that comes out of his mouth is Maidani. Now, it's so important that it should be the first thing that when they structured the Maida Ani, thank you, they made it without Hashem's name. Now, isn't that remarkable? I mean, you're saying thank you to Hashem. So say thank you to Hashem. Maida Ani Lefonecha. All of a sudden, we're getting shy about saying to Hashem, say Hashem's name. The answer is we don't say Hashem's name because then it wouldn't be able to be the first thing that we say. Because our hands are not clean, we didn't wash them yet. So they deliberately left out Hashem's name, although they would want us to say Hashem. But they wanted us immediately upon awakening. It's the first thing every morning, 365 days a year, the first thing. So they left out Hashem's name so we should be able to say it as soon as we open our eyes. That should be the first thing. That's how important gratitude to this. As a matter of fact, the second part we can't say until we wash our hands. Reishis chokhmo yiras Hashem. We have to wait until we wash our hands because that has Hashem's name. That's the halacha. But the first part, we could say with your dying Timaeus. And they deliberately made it. That's why. If a person doesn't say Maidani in the morning. Ah, yeah, Maidani, it's for kids. person doesn't say Maidani in the morning, they have a lot to improve. Shouldn't feel bad. Shaifa reminds us, Shapra Masechim, this isn't a big improvement. The first, even before you say, hello, honey, to your wife. Even before a wife says, hello, love, to her husband. No, no, before that. The first thing is Maida Ani Lefanecha. This is a very big lesson. This is a, this is a very big lesson. That's the idea of that the Torah starts with Bereshus. All firsts should be for Hashem. All firsts. That's why the first day of the year isn't just a regular day. It's a very special day, Rosh Hashanah, dedicated 
to coronating Hashem as our king. It's the first day of the Aseris Mechuvah. Rosh Hashanah is the first day of the Aseris Mechuvah. The first day of the year is a day of Chuva. It's a day of recognizing Hashem. Why? Because firsts have to be for Hashem. That's why our first child, the first son, is a Pidyan Aben. All firsts are special. That's why when we start the Torah, it's Simchus Torah. It's special. That's why when a husband and wife get married, everybody sings and, 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 and dances and, and says praises to Hashem because all firsts have to be special. The idea of firsts being special is the reason why in the morning you're not supposed to eat before davening. Now, of course, if a person is older and he's weak, and he won't be able to concentrate on his davening, especially on uh, Shabbos. He could have a coffee before davening. But the Pesach says, Lo al hadam. And one of the meanings of Lo Yisoichlu al hadam means Lo Yisoichlu al isa Don't eat until you prayed for your life. Don't feed your face before davening. Why? Because the first is for Hashem. I've told you this in the past, that there are certain schools, well-meaning, that want to give to Rebbeim a full day's salary. So what they do is they stagger their classes. They have multiple sixth grades. So one sixth grade learns Limudei Kodesh in the morning and Limudei Chol in the afternoon and one sixth grade learns English in the morning and Hebrew studies in the afternoon. This way they could have the Rebbe teach in the morning and the afternoon. It's a strategy, but Ramosha said it's not right. It's a well-meaning strategy. But Ramayusha said you cannot send a subliminal message to a group of children that they'll learn secular studies before Hebrew studies. Math can't come before Chumash. English can't come before Gemara. That's a subliminal message that you can't send. It has to be racist. This is... The idea of gratitude, of showing appreciation, is so vital that we know that there were three collections uh, in the uh, in in in, in Yushalmi Shkalim. We learned in great detail that there were three collections of Shkalim. One of the three collections of Shkalim were for the Ma'as Adonim, were for the hundred sockets that were used in the Beis HaMikdash. And the Balaturim tells us that the hundred sockets correspond to the hundred Amens, because that's why they're called Adonim. Adonim is the same words as Adonoyim. The hundred sockets was is the foundation of the base of Mikdash. That's the sockets which the pillars sat inside the sockets. It's the foundation. There were a hundred of them. It was a special collection. They represent a hundred times we say Adonai when we make Meya Brachas. That's the foundation of a Jewish home. Which means that a Jewish home is built on gratitude. You know, my first Rebbetzin told me, Rebbe Liba, Bas Rebaran, Zechit Tzedek, Zorach, Zchus Yagen Aleinu, that our saintly mother, Devora Bas Aryeleib, she was the personal secretary of Rav Henkin, Saintly mother told her when she gets married, 
she should never forget to say thank you to her husband. She never forget to say please. If we want to raise a generation of children that show gratitude, we have to model it in the home. You know, in the biography of Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky, they asked Rabbi Yaakov, how do you teach your children to make good brachas? So Rabbi Yaakov said, I don't teach my children. I make a good bracha. My Rebetzin makes a good bracha. That's the way the children learn to make good brachas. By extension, we don't teach thank you. We say thank you to our spouse. And that's where the children learn to say thank you. That's where the children, they hear us. They hear us saying thank you to the woman that's working in the counter. They hear us saying thank you to a bus driver. That's where they learn gratitude. Gratitude is the way of the Yehudim. And brachas are so important. You know, it says that Dovra Melech was told that there were a hundred soldiers dying every day. So it says, Neum HaGeber Hukam Oil. Oil is, Ayin Lamed is a hundred. He instituted a hundred brachas a day and they stopped dying. It says, as the Pele says about making brachas, Ubekol Makam She'askir Eshmi Will you mention my name? This is a very great thing. We're talking about bettering ourselves for the new year. Making meaningful blessings. Where maybe we'll do like is advised. To elevate our voice just one octave more when we say Hashem's name. Baruch Atah Hashem. It's already way, way ahead of, and then to say, Taka Hashem, Shakol Nia Bidvaro. Everything. Not just the delicious water, but the refrigerator that makes it cold. The remarkable invention of a glass. The fact that it's filtered and clean. Ah! Shakol Nia Bidvaro. You have a, a good piece of bread. Ramilla would wax eloquently about how the bread, when it touches the tongue, it turns into sugars. Hamaitzi lechem in our it's this delicious food that fills us. Right? But to be grateful, to be a Yehudi, why is that give life? Because Hashem says people that do this, I want them on this world. You know, what, what bracha do we say at a chasana? One of the Shev brachas is, Shakal Everything was created for Hashem's honor. We're doing the purpose of creation. Now, A family can make a lot of impression on Friday night with the singing of Aishas Chayim. You could stop and say, do you know what this is about, this Aishas Chayim? You see this table? You see how nicely it's set? You see how delicious the food is? And even if it's bought food, just warming it up, putting it on the blech, cleaning the dishes, or just going out and shopping for it. We say thank you with Aisha Skyen. Now if a wife is smart, she'll chime in. You know, it's not just Aisha Skyen, there's an Ishkayel. 
Whose money do you think I'm using? You know, it, it wouldn't be very nice if the electricity wasn't on. The electricity bill has to be paid. It wouldn't be very nice if we didn't have a beautiful home. The mortgage has to be paid. When, they're, when, when a father and mother, when a husband and wife show Akar Sataiv, oh, that teaches Akar Sataiv. That's the foundation of a Jewish home. You know, I decided, since we're all looking for things to work on, to work upon, and although I've talked about this more than once, but we could always learn more, one of the things, one of the practices of our Karas HaTayv that we do at least at least even a young person at least five times a day says the bracha of Asher Yatza. I think I saw in the stipler Sefer Karyana de Igrisa the average person makes, as the day advances, an Ashi Yatzer about three hours apart. If you're older, you make it much more often. The Brach of Ashi Yatzer is a magnificent statement of multiple hakarasatay. We, we relieve ourselves, whether we're urinating or moving our bowels, and we start off with the declaration of Ashe Yotzar Esa Odom B'chachma. That Hashem created man with wisdom. So first of all, we have to know that there is two schools of thought how to translate this. One is Ashe Yotzar Esa Odom Bechachma Hashem created man utilizing great divine wisdom. And that that just gets us to think of the intricacies of the human eye the intricacies of the human ear, the complexities of the brain, just the incredible, incredible genius of the inner ear that controls a person's equilibrium. The amazing pulmonary system the amazing digestive system. And of course, what, what is the catalyst of our statement of Akar Sataiv is the excretory system. So that's one shot of Asher Yatzer Es Adam B'Chachma. It's talking about the divine wisdom that goes into the human machine. There's another meaning. Shulchan Aruch, Simen Vav, Asher Yotzer Es Adam Bechachma, that we're waxing how Hashem created man with wisdom, that He gave us wisdom. We're thanking Hashem every time we go to the bathroom, we thank Hashem for wisdom. First of all, what does that mean? Now you can't have these kavanas uh, each time. What you do is you say many Asha Yat says you vary your kavana. That's why I'm telling you different meanings. You can vary it. But when we say that Hashem created us with wisdom, that means Ezel Chacham Haraya Sanaylud. Who's wise? Somebody that sees ahead. Meaning that we're not like an animal, 
an animal only lives for now. For the moment. The animal doesn't know anything else. But Asher Yotzer is Adam Mechachma. He gave us foresight to plan for Olam Abba. He gave us foresight to look ahead. Asher Yotzer is Adam Mechachma means that he gave us wisdom to make the right choices. He gave us the wisdom to know how to, like we said last week, we have the wisdom to know not to say Lashon Hara. Right? The person that doesn't have wisdom is going to say whatever he feels like. It's the world we live in. People say whatever they, whatever they feel. That's why we have such a complicated world. Yishol says something else. Asher Yotzer as Adam Bechachma means he created, since we're talking about the fact that we removed the psilus, that which is unnecessary, the waste. We first thank Hashem who created man with wisdom giving us such delicious food. First of all, he gave us food that gives us vitality. That gives us the strength to do what we need to do. He gives us food that helps us be decisive. The Gemara says, Ish yinovev yilovev. A man that is hollow is, is of two hearts. A person that has a full stomach can be more decisive. But Hashem could have just made a hole in our shoulder and told us to go to the Exxon station. Could have pumped it in. That's no fun. It's no fun. He made a hundred different species of apples. He made pistachio nuts. He made lamb chops. He made so many delicious fruits. Dinosaur pears. Luscious blueberries, sweet kiwi, refreshing watermelon. That's a shayatzer as Adam Chachma. Then the Shulchan Aruch says something else. This is all part of a curse type. He says part of the Chachma is that Hashem gave us. A neshama. Vayipach ba'apav. He blew into us a soul. Now that soul is a ruach elikim, a spirit of Hashem. Now, a balloon that has ruach in it, if you make a hole, it all comes out. So it says what the chachma is that although we have many orifices, we have many holes the neshama doesn't come out. That's all chachma. And then we go on to say, by the, by the way, I should tell you, I never said this before. In the Oitzer Atfilus, which is a remarkable compendium on prayer, there's a pirish there, Anaf Yosef. The Anaf Yosef says amazing gematria of Chachma. It's amazing gematria. Now, this is an accepted method of gematria, but you have to be a genius. This was, of course, the Anaf Yosef was way before computers. So this is without the help of computers. There's a gematria called the gematria mole. That means you take the letter as it's spelled in full. So he says the word Chachma is broken down in the gematria of Malay. Ches is Ches Yud Saf. Chaf is Chaf and the Fe. Mem is Mem Mem. Mem. And Hey is Hey Yud. Now if you take it, I, I took the time to compute it. Ches Yud Saf. Chaf and the Fe. 
Mem, Mem, and Hey Yud is exactly 613. The Chachma is that Hashem gave us the wisdom to fulfill the 613 mitzvahs. We have it in. That's Hashem Yatzer, it's Adam See the hints that are in our davening. Uvaravay Nikavim Nikavim. He made many orifices. So there's an obvious question. It says Nikavim Nikavim, many orifices. Chalulim Chalulim, many hollow organs. It should say Uvaravay Nikavim the Chalulim. Nikavim is plural. Why does it repeat it? Nekavim, nekavim, chalulim, chalulim. It should say, uvarvay nekavim, orifices, v'chalulim, and hollow organs. Why does it say nekavim, nekavim, chalulim, chalulim? Why the double talk? So one answer, I believe, is because Hashem gave us orifices in many cases, in twos. He gave us many offices, that's Nikavim, but it says it twice to accentuate, to emphasize, he gave us Nikavim, many offices, of them are Nikavim. Those offices come in twos. He gave us two eyes. He gave us two nostrils. He gave us two ears. So each of the orifices were nekavim, were plural. So first is nekavim, he gave us many orifices, and nekavim, many of those orifices are in twos, are in plural. Right, that's a big, big thing. First of all, if somebody, if one of the eyes don't work, he has another eye. If one of the ears don't work, he has another ear. But it's also, when you have two eyes, it gives you a much greater vantage. You have two ears, it gives you much greater vantage. Gemara says that really, in the Yerushalmi, really, there should be two mouths. So that we could use one for Divrei Chel and one dedicate just for holy things. You have a power of a mouth and a holy mouth. But the Gemara says, we say so much Sosh and Har with one mouth, imagine if we had two mouths. That's why we don't have two mouths. Here, by the way, again, is a remarkable gematria. The gematria of Chalulim Chalulim is 248, which is the 248 limbs. We thank Hashem for our eyes, for our ears, we thank Hashem that we're able to urinate, that we're able to evacuate. We thank Hashem that we're able to eat, we're able to taste. And then the Chalulim Chalulim gives us ripe opportunity sometimes to thank Hashem for our breathing, for our lungs, we don't have asthma. To thank Hashem for the cleaning system of the liver. We thank Hashem for the works of the kidneys, for the pumping of the heart, for the magnificent brain. In all of these, she'im yifaseach echad mehem, if one of them would open, would burst, it would be a hemorrhage. O yisasem echad mehem, if one of them would be blocked with a cyst, with a tumor, with a hardening of arteries, chas v'shalom. We wouldn't be able to survive. Baruch Hashem. Blessed are you, Hashem. You cure us. You cure us from the poison of the food that if it would lay in our body, it would poison us. It's incredible. It's incredible. It's a pella. Now, simply, it's a pella in that, you know, Michal, he was a doctor. He might know what part of our food is important for the body, has proteins, and what part is waste. But I don't know. 
have no clue. But my body is an automatic pilot and keeps what it needs and separates every day to the bathroom by Hashem and gets rid of it. An autopilot. I don't have to do any selection. If I'd be busy with selection, my goodness, I'd go to a health food store and only eat that which is good. I have to be busy with selections. It's a pella. Mafli lasses. It's also a pella. Hashem does it for us even if we don't deserve it. Even if we don't make good brachas. And even if we're eating and we're not using our time wisely. I just want to also add, Ashi Yotzer Es Adam B'Chachma. Shem gives us food that could create Ava. But yeah, if Yitzchak is Esav, Kitzayin B'Fiv, Yitzchak loved Esav because he cooked for him. Food is a way that a woman could generate love from her husband. It sounds very gashmi, but a road to a man's heart is through his stomach. It's also a chachma. They asked Rabbi Zilberstein an interesting question. Wow. to speak about 9-11 and I got very careful okay they asked of Zilberstein the following question there was a color younger man that when he came out of the bathroom in the morning he said an Asha Yotzer out loud and it distracted everybody learning. They had to stop and listen and answer Amen. And it interrupted everybody's learning. So they asked Reb Zilberstein if it would be proper to tell him to say it low. That everybody shouldn't be interrupted from their learning. They're talking about a Toysmith, a Rajba, a Rambam. And you know, learning. Tamatari Kanegat Kula. So Reb Zilberstein told them from a remarkable sefer. There's a remarkable sefer called Shailas Uchuvas Min HaShamayim. Responsive from heaven. Now that's a, what does that mean? So there was a 13th century French scholar by the name of Rav Yaakov Halevi that wrote this amazing sefer called Shailas Uchuvas Min HaShamayim which were responsive that he got from communicating with the Rabbeinu Shalom through dreams. He went to sleep and he had a question in his dreams and he got answers. And th this is a responsa called Charles of Chuvus Minishmaim. So he has a statement over there in Simon Lamed Gimel that the saying of Asher Yotzar has the same strength as Birchas HaGoymel. Now we know that if somebody was in a car accident and saved, or somebody came from a dangerous journey, or somebody got out of jail, so he says by the Sefer Torah, you need have a minion. He says Birchas HaGoymel. He says Asher Yotzar is such a miracle. We just said Mafli Lazos. That it's as great as Birchas HaGoymel. Now when we know when it comes to saying Birchas HaGaymel, we gather ten people together to say Birchas HaGaymel. We don't say, oh, we can't trouble people. We can't take them away from their learning. So Asher Yatzer is a very big thing. You know, that the carbon Taida, the Thanksgiving offering, that's a, a species of a Shlomim. It's a species of a peace offering. Now, a peace offering you're allowed to eat its meat for two days and one night before it becomes nicer, because, before it becomes forbidden and left over. Toda is a species of shlamim, 
but you only could eat it for one day and one night. And it's accompanied by 40 loaves of four different types. So you would think they give more time, not less time. So Sifurna, he says, the reason why it has so many loaves and its time is shortened is that the one that brings it has to gather more people to eat it. So it shouldn't be left over. So that more people will hear about his rescue, about his thanksgiving. They should be able to be market type. So Reb Zilberstein says, absolutely don't stop the person from making a Asher Yatsa. And then he says, by the way, just like saying a brocha saved a hundred soldiers from dying, the Amen also saves from dying. The opportunity to say to Amen to Asher Yatsa is a big thing. Actually, it's a Gemara. The Gemara says, that whoever says Amen with Kavana, Marichen lo yama v'shnaizav. It prolongs his life. That's why husbands and wives should say their brachas out loud. Because you want your wife to live long? You say bracha out loud so she can answer Amen. You want your husband to live long? Say the bracha out loud. That you can answer Amen. I told you a big Kiddush. I said this once before. Then Reb Chaim Kanievsky, Zerzak Vrachas Husiyagan Alainu, in Reb Chaim Kanievsky's Sefer on uh, Tvila, put out by Artsgrove, he writes that when his wife listened, he would say his Brachas in the morning, Birchas Hashachar, and his wife listened and answered Amen, because that makes it a complete Bracha. Because when it is an Amen, so those are, then you have two Adem. The one who makes the bracha and the one who answered Amen. He would tell his wife to have him in mind with the Amen. And he was Yaitzi with the Amen with Shemei Akana. Amen is a big thing. It's So he said, when you say Amen, have me in mind. And I'll listen to it that I should be Yaitzi with the Amen. Now, that's because you can't say Amen to your own bracha. You can't be Aina Amen to your own bracha. It looks like, it looks like haughtiness. You say, you, should, you say a bracha and then you say Amen, it's true. First of all, it's, if you're saying it, obviously it's true. But, Amen has another kavan. If you know, Amen means, it, I believe, Right? I mean, it's the Russian of Emunah, I believe it. But also, it means Kaini Hirotzen. So should it be. Or like the Eilis Talmud makes it quick. Ulevai. It should be fulfilled. So he had in mind, when his wife answered Amen, he had in mind Amen too. So that his bracha should be fulfilled. I had said that we would talk tonight about 9-11, but it's probably going to happen only for the Shabbos table. Because I want to continue this theme of Akarish Tataiv. We know that one of the ways to, to exercise Akarish Tataiv is through the choice of a name for a child. So for example, Moshe and Yocheved called one of their children Eliezer. Why? Because when Moshe Rabbeinu slew the Mitzri that beat the Jew, it says that Dustin and Aviram slandered him. And they arrested Moshe. And they already had his head on the block. And the sword came down. But it says that Hashem made a miracle and Moshe Rabbeinu's neck turned into marble. And they called the child Eliezer, Elikei Avib Ezri. The God of my father was in my stead. Now the idea of naming the child Eliezer 
is that every time he calls the child, he remembers that he should be grateful that if it wasn't for the miracle, he wouldn't be alive. Names are methods to show a curse There was a name who was popular in the older days, Ganesha. Now some people spelled Ganesha Gin Gimel Nun Shine. Those letters might be familiar to you. They're the letters of a dreidel. Ganesha Gimel Nun Shine. And it was given when there was a miracle in the birth. Let's say the, the wife, uh, the cord was wrapped around the baby's neck. Or the wife was very sick and she survived the difficult C-section. So they called the baby Ganesha so that they always remembered Nez Gadol HaYasham. This is the way the way of giving names, names are a way to show gratitude. As I told you, Leah had her fourth child. She had extra, Hashem, so she called him Yehuda. Rachel wasn't able to have child for children for many years. And, you know, people were saying, oh, maybe she's the trophy wife, the pretty wife. Sometimes there was a practice that they gave a woman a cup of sterility. So she was always pretty. They were saying, she's the trophy wife. So when Yosef was born, Yosef is from the root. Hashem gathered my shame. Not only that, but Rashi says that when she was living alone with Yaakov, anything that went wrong, she was blamed. Now, when she had a child, everybody will say, Yosef did it. So she was embarrassed anymore. Eh? She never wanted to forget that gratitude. She know that names, names are a big thing in Yiddishkeit. Names are never taken for granted. There's a sto true story of a woman that went many, many years without children. She tried many different segulas. And then one time she told Hashem, Hashem, if you give me a child, I'll name the child Yisrael Meir. Yisrael Meir was the name of the Chavetz Chaim. I'll name the child Yisrael Meir, and every time I'll call his name, I'll remember, and my family will remember, and he'll remember not to speak Loshanar. And nine months later, she had a child. And she said, raising that child, she never talked about people. She remembered the name Yisrael Meir. Binyamin also used it. It says that all ten children, Binyamin had ten children. All ten children of Binyamin were named to remember that his brother was in captivity. She'd always remember to pray for him. For example, one of the names, I'm not going to go through all ten, one of the names were Chupim. It stood for, I didn't see his Chupa and he didn't see my Chupa. It's Chupim. Gave ten names, all ten names were to remember. Now, there were people that used this in a wicked way. You know, it says that Yaakov Avinu said, Hatzileni miyad ochi miyad esav. Save me for my brother from Esau. Of course, everybody asks, we know his brother was Esau. Why does he have to say, Hatzileni mi Esau? Why does it say, Hatzileni no mi yad ochi mi yad Esau? So the famous answer is the Beis HaLevi. He says, save me when he acts like my brother. If he acts friendly to me, then I might learn things from him. And save me when he acts like Esau. He's dangerous either way. If he's friendly, then it's a danger that I might learn from him. When he's Esau, he's murderous. However, there's a medrash that says a different shot. That Esau had another child. And he called him Ochi. 
And the reason why he called him Ochi, my brother, is that he should always remember his hatred to Yaakov. And he commissioned this child that whenever he sees Yaakov, he should murder him. The child was a ferocious child. And that's the meaning of Atzileini nami Yarachi. If I run into Achi, he's deadly. Umiyad Esav, and from Esav. But you see, Esav used the name in the wrong way. To remember hate. Moshe and Yocheved, Moshe Rabbeinu, I mean Amram and Yocheved called their daughter Miriam. Because even though Shevet Levi wasn't enslaved, that was a special because they were the caste of the priests, they weren't Yosef set that up, that he excused the Admas Kahanim, so that carried on, and Shevet Levi wasn't enslaved. But Amram and Yecheved did not want to forget the bitterness, so they called their first daughter Miriam to remember Mariris, the bitterness. So they called their daughter bitter, so that they should feel the bitterness of Klal Yisra. It's the way, the way to be. Anytime we give a name, you know, a lot, there's, there's a lot of names that remind us, for example, Yoichanan, Yoy, Yudvav is one of Hashem's names, Yochanan, that the Rabbi is gracious to us. The, the, these are names to remember gratitude to the Rabbi Nisham. And by the way, when a person gives a name of a parent that's in the next world, it reminds them always to be grateful for what their parents taught them and did for them. Names are a device by Yiddishkeit. Names are very important in Yiddishkeit, besides other important purposes of names. Yeah, I see over here we're already over an hour. Make sure to tune in tomorrow night for... Uh, for the, for the Shabbos table, and if you listen to the broadcast Thursday, it'll be archived later Thursday night, also for the Shabbos table, when I hope to speak about 9-11. Uh, I want to remind you uh, to uh, uh, sponsor a share, 718-916-3100, rmmwsi at aol.com. We did the Mishnah Yaimis already. Have a wonderful night. And a wonderful Shabbos.